Well, Toodle Pip there, chums, as I, Captain Steve, and today I bring to thee a video on Biomutant. Now, you can go right back on my channel into yonder, and you would see that I've been very excited for Biomutant. I've even changed my banner on my channel and stuff, because I did pre-order this, and it's a game that I've been watching for some time, and I think it looks sublime and beautiful. However, I have watched PewDiePie play the first couple of hours of gameplay. I'm going to get to why that's worried me a little. But first, I want to bring you what Stefan, the art director at THQ Nordic, has to say on the title. Take a listen. So, what is Biomutant in a nutshell? Biomutant is an open-world, post-apocalyptic kung fu fable. Basically, in terms of structure, it's like uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild, I guess. But the feedback that's, you know, that we've been getting over the years, it's that it's kind of uh, a strange, weird, good mix between Ratchet & Clank, Devil May Cry, Batman Arkham, yeah, and a couple of other influences. So it's truly an uh, open world game, 8 by 8 uh, kilometers, filled with a lot of weird events and fun things to find. I think the primary thing that we worked a lot with is uh, the control that the player have uh, over the character customization. We have uh, the possibility for the player, you know, to, to set the attributes and in Biomutant that's uh, tightly connected or integrated with the way that the character uh, looks. But the player is like completely free to morph their own uh, breed, we call it a breed, but mammal if you will. And eventually, you know, people have a lot of assumptions on what kind of animal this is. But for me, and I guess the team, we have allowed the player to make what I call you know, more like a Muppet. And with character customization, you know, it goes all the way down to crafting bits onto your clothes or hats or uh, pants or whatnot. Uh, I guess the most important thing is the arsenal or the weapons. I mean, it's an action role-playing game, right? So we're focusing on, on the action parts of, you know, the role-playing aspect. Each like part that you can find for weapons and gear also comes with like a, a material, uh, a, a quality aspect, so they can be more damaged or of a higher quality material. Just mentioning that you don't have to repair, <laughs> but you can actually upgrade things that are broken, but they, they will never uh, diminish in terms of, of their material qualities, like in Zelda, for example, we don't do that. In the game, you have six different tribes, uh, so they're all composed of, you know, a leader, a Sifu, if you will, that have mastered a specific Wang Fu uh, combat style and uh, trained his disciples in, in that. So these tribes are now in conflict. Basically, there are three tribes that have what we call a light aura. So basically a, a good karma, if you will, if you want to paint it black and white. And there are three tribes that have like a dark aura. Eventually, at the start of the game, you will find that you have to choose an ally. So one of these six tribes. As you move along or uh, go further into the game, you're free at any time to change your allegiance. But at the start of the game, you, you, you choose one of these two tribes. And basically at that point, the state of the world is represented by the huge tree that's at the heart of the 8 by 8 kilometer over world. So it's a representation um, of the world either uh, going under or the world surviving. So this is all tied to the tree of life. A light or a tribe, they want to save the world, so make sure that the tree uh, survives, and also then uniting the other tribes, whilst allying with dark or a tribe would mean the opposite. They believe that the only way that you can move forward is to make sure there's kind of a cleansing, I guess, so uh, making sure that everything that's bad in the world uh, kind of goes on there so you have a rebirth and start anew if that makes sense so you're very free to make this choice but also bear in mind that that will affect the ending of the game <laughs> obviously game being called by a mutant has to have some form of mutations uh, slash abilities right there's quite a wide range of them 
primarily we have the bi mutations, so those are kind of more physical abilities, if you will. For example, you can spawn a, a mushroom in front of you. Uh, that has multiple uses, if I just use that one as an example, in terms of creative freedom for you as a player. Combining this jumping up on the mushroom with, let's say, just uh, electricity shooting out from your fingers, like the Emperor in Star Wars, or once the character is airborne, like your enemy, uh, just going up there, unleashing some other kind of strange abilities. I don't want to go into all of them. But uh, the other aspect is the Psy mutations. So those are more like your you know, X-Men style abilities, if you will. Like, for example, Levitate, which again uh, can give you both exploration opportunities, but also then in, in, you can use it in combat in conjunction with other abilities and obviously ranged combat. So that will give you an advantage, I guess. You're wanting to keep on exploring the world because you're wondering what's going to be, you know, around the next corner. And I guess the hope that we have as a group, as a team, is that that's going to be the unifying factor in terms of people playing the game and giving us feedback. Uh, that we that it's notable that the game has a soul or a vibe that is a little bit unique and special. That's my highest hope for the game, I guess. Okay, so now the things that really excite me about Biomutant in that previous trailer that you just saw there and what Stefan had to say about the title is yes, there's a dark side and a light side. There's three different tribes for each of those and dojos and styles and things for martial arts. The weapon crafting looks awesome. The world itself is beautifully crafted with lots hidden there. Now a lot of the NPCs, when you go and see them, you talk to them, it can spark off different side arcs and missions that you can do. So there seems to be a lot of depth to this. However, that said, when you watch PewDiePie's gameplay for the first couple of hours, yes, granted it's a tutorial, and about an hour in, then the title screen pops. It goes to show that this game is quite big, but what you saw with PewDiePie playing it does seem quite linear and not as open world as what you saw in the previous trailers and I think a lot of people have seen that PewDiePie gameplay trailer and expect the whole game to be like that. That's the tutorial we saw there and it was a March build not May it's not a recent build. Now this is a recent trailer though and this is PlayStation 5 graphics and it's being played on a PlayStation 5 upscaled from the PlayStation 4 and it gives a disclaimer saying exactly that and that's what we're seeing on screen right now. Now the actual gameplay for this doesn't look like it's going to break the mold all too much but I, I still think this game looks sublimely beautiful and when I say the gameplay isn't going to break the, the mold all too much even in Stefan's interview he said that it's got elements of Arkham, it's got elements of this game and that game and this game and that game and it's a medley, a mesh mash of stuff come together. So it's stuff that we've seen in other titles, even by Stefan's own admission, it's not something that's going to break the mold but it's beautiful and it's something I feel is slightly different. I mean I'm a massive fan of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Kung Fu Panda and John Woo films and he's got elements of all that in too. Stefan didn't mention any of that but yeah I see elements of that in it too. So it's a bio mutant of freaking games, it's a freaking fusion and I'm still eager to play it and listen to this, listen to the narration. That's a Hope Hall. Some used to go there every week to join hands and hope together. Not so much hope to go around these days. Okay, so now you know why I love it. You know, it's got awesome narration, it sounds a little bit like me. And I love all the comic book transitions and there's all comic book wording that comes up when you twat somebody around the head with a cane. So it, 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 it plays to all the things that I love in life and I love ninja in. I, I, I'm always saying how much of a ninja I am. I can actually be a ninja in this but what I would say is this gameplay when you are doing some of your ninja abilities it's, it's quite jerky and the camera angles are a little bit odd. I don't know what it is but yeah I can't put my finger on it but it just doesn't look as slick as what I thought it would be from the trailers but then what game actually is I bet this is mental to play I bet it feels good combat wise to play but look how quick it is I mean some of the animation like there 
it's fast on purpose, a little bit like Dragon Ball Z, but it sort of j jots the screen about. It's not as smooth or as fluid, even as, say, like the Xenoverse Dragon Ball games and things like that. But it, it may change. I may feel different about it when I get in there and actually get on, my, on the joypad and I'm actually playing the game. But to me, it looks like it's a little bit... I don't know. I think what it is, is we've been spoiled with the likes of Spider-Man, Miles Morales where you have got that quick sort of fighting mechanics but everything remains quite smooth there's no sort of staggered sort of frames in there and all the blur effects that you've got going on here i mean i guess he's using flames that's why you've got the blurring effects and things or the motion twirls and stuff and the motion blur there it it almost feels like a lot of the sort of special effects are sort of covering the fact that maybe the frame rate isn't keeping up with the game i don't know it just doesn't it could be because we're watching a video i'm not too sure but it's like there, you see where he ran to the rocket and he ran through the bad guy's legs. You would expect him to sort of clamber over them or something. There, there seems to be a little bit of polish that seems to look like it's a little bit lacking in places. It's like the flame effects there and the particle effects. That was just an animation that then just went out. It, it does still look like a PlayStation 4 title, Someone but it is. It doesn't look next-gen, is what I'm getting at, I think. Anyway, I'm still excited and stoked for the title, but I am a little worried at the same time. I'd love to hear your thoughts, people. Please put them in the comments. Goodbye. I want to say a massive great big thank you for watching. If you like what you see, please like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. And thank you to my backers over on Patreon and on YouTube membership. If you do want to support this channel, you could just not skip my adverts. That throws revenue down my avenue. Or stay with Captain Steve a little bit longer and hit something on this screen. Heck, yes. There's also merch on this screen now. Awesome.